maybe two years ago, we got yeah. connected and had a phone call first, and then a crazy second phone call came in where you said, Jeff, why don't you change your plans <laughs> and take a trip with me? Now, how many of your yeah. friends is that the second phone call? You're like, hey, go on a trip with yeah, me. Not, is it? Not, it doesn't happen often. No. It was a it was a very special second yeah. phone call because it was unexpected and it led to a bunch of new friends that yeah. I had a chance to meet. This yeah. was a trip to Green Bay, Wisconsin, yeah. crafted by you as one of yeah. your guys' trips. Yep. And we'll talk a little more in this conversation about it, but it's it's uh, to me uh, someone who says, "Hey, come join me." Mm. Especially if the "come join me" is something that truly could change my life, truly could be a memory that I won't forget. Yep. Uh, that invitation of "come join me." led to a moment where you honored your dad. Mm. So we were playing bags, we were enjoying some uh, good barbecue in a backyard, yep. and you unexpectedly, to all the guys on this trip, there was maybe 12 of us on the trip, and, yep. and you took a moment and you shared uh, straight to your dad in front of us. You let us witness a moment of honoring your dad. Yeah. Uh, you don't have to share like the three key things, but uh, would you take us into that moment just yeah. a little bit of uh, yeah. why did you set that moment up? Because it was more than for just your dad. Yeah. It really impacted all of us. Yeah. And what are some of the things you, you said to honor your dad? Well, I think honoring our parents is really important. And I remember growing up, my dad, he's a carpenter. He had a 50-year a career as a carpenter. So I, I learned the value of hard work from my dad. And I think as you, you go through life, there's a period where you want to hang out with your dad. And there's a period where you want to hang out with your friends. But then as you get a little bit older, you're like, hey, actually, like I can learn a lot from my dad. My dad's kind of cool. I want to hang out with my dad. And that was a relationship that I had with my dad. So I, I do these guys trips. I try to make them really intentional. We have a lot of fun, but there's a lot of purpose behind it. And so I had one in Green Bay. My folks are just south of Green Bay, like an hour or so. I was like, dad, would you, would you ever want to come and kind of run the grill like put some brats on do some burgers like we're doing a, a true wisconsin tailgate he's like sure so i didn't tell him what i was going to do because i think especially as men it's really hard for us to kind of communicate our feelings sometimes yeah. and if i told him what i was going to do he might be like oh i don't know if i want to do that so i just wanted to share with the guys like here's some things that my dad taught me that i think would would serve you things like i remember he came up, I had a condo in Eden Prairie, and he came up, again, a carpenter, so he's really handy. I started taping. I put some, you know, those blue painter tape around yeah. the, the trim and stuff. So I started putting the blue painter tape up, and I would kind of trim with the edged uh, paint, painting brush. And he comes over, and he's like, Kyle, this isn't a license to be sloppy. And he taught me the value of if you're going to do something, you're going to do it right, and yeah. you're going to do it well, and we take pride in what we do, and the details really matter in life. And that's just one of the components. There was a couple more, but... Yeah. I wanted to honor him because I don't think in that moment where he was telling me that this isn't a license to be sloppy, I never said thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the opportunity for me to learn from you shoulder to shoulder. That's how guys learn from each other. That's how guys kind of connect. And I never really had a chance to thank him. So I'm giving my presentation. I'm, t I'm telling the guys the three things that I learned from my dad. And then I, I stopped at the end and I said, by the way, the guy back there who was cooking the brats and the burgers, that's Tom Depius. That's my dad. And he got really kind of, I think he kind of started to figure out what's going on. He got really embarrassed. But I think sometimes it's just really important to honor people yeah. in front of other people. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that was important to me. I wanted to make something really special to him. So thank people and be grateful for people while they're around. Like tomorrow's not guaranteed. And so I don't know. My dad's 74. Uh, he's in good health, but you just never know. And so thank people. And I think I'm really grateful for him and my mom, and I just wanted to honor him. Yeah. I think there's also something to merging uh, a moment with friends or a moment that you craft for your kind of – even us guys will pull guys together for ourselves. We'll do that yeah. cabin weekend or we'll do this or that. Yeah. But to merge with generational – those yeah. of us that our dad is still alive to bring yeah. our dad into yeah. those moments. Yeah. Very special. And it was, it was a gift for all of us. I mean, just spending time rubbing shoulders, chatting with your dad was, yeah. it was a gift. Uh, questions is something that I, I really appreciate about you, Kyle. It's yeah. the way you ask questions. Mm. And instead of just letting the conversation go wherever it goes, which is okay at times, uh, just looking for the moment to ask a question that takes things a little deeper. Yep. And one of the questions you asked on that, on that trip was, uh, let's just all spend a little time going around, uh, and rank how you're doing one to 10. You mm -hmm. can't choose seven mm -hmm. and explain why <laughs> yeah. is that taking it right? Yeah. Seven's a cop out answer. It's kind of like, well, if I go lower than seven, people think like that might be an area of struggle. So now I'm, I'm putting myself in a vulnerable position. Mm -hmm. If I go higher than seven, like, oh, I kind of feel like I've got things figured out. 
So seven is a cop-out answer. You can't use seven. That's kind of my philosophy. It was great. It, it took, I mean, this was an hour and a half drive. There was like four of us having a conversation around just that one yeah. simple question. Yeah. But it takes someone to say, I'll go first. I'll be mm-hmm. the guy who asked the question. Yeah. Something I really appreciate about you. Are there other yeah. questions that you tend to be like, hey, it's a go-to with a group of guys. Here's, here's maybe just to give us some ammunition for future, taking things yeah. a little deeper. Any top of mind questions that you'll ask? I, I think one of the questions I like, I read a book called, I think it's Gratitude and Pasta. And I don't remember the author, but it just, I think gratitude is really important. Um, and so one of the questions is like, if, if who's someone um, who's not here right now that maybe you've never really had a chance to think, but that's really grateful for how they, you, how they influenced your life. Mm-hmm. And it just gets guys thinking and you hear answers like, well, I had a coach, you know, back when I was in, in, in school or I had a teacher or, you know, I had an uncle that, that showed up for me in a really unique way. And I just think, it gives guys a chance to stop and think, go beyond what their current situation is and maybe what they're really hung up on and and just be grateful for maybe who's had an impact or a mark on their life and maybe they haven't had a chance to thank them. Yeah. Because a lot of times guys go back then after that conversation and they say, hey, I, I wanted to thank you for something that you did yeah. years ago. I mean, I used to be a high school business teacher. It's one of those things like 16, 17, eight-year-olds, like they don't stop and say thank you. It's true. But you hear from them years later and they're like, that lesson that you taught me or that time you showed up to, you know, the game. Yeah. Thank you for that. That meant a lot. And when you hear that from someone, you're like, whoa, I appreciate that. So we just need to be in, in that cycle of gratitude more often. So that question feels like it has like a triple impact because one, the person sharing is doing a little introspection. They're doing yep. a little processing yep. out loud, which is good for all of us to just yeah. go, go into kind of a gratitude yeah. moment. Two, their sharing the story actually helps the room get to know them and yeah. what's shaped them and who are the people that shaped them. Yep. And then three, now it might, uh, that nudge of they vocalized honor in that moment in gratitude, that person's still alive. Why why, yeah. why not let that seed go take root, like you're saying, and go, go back to them. them. So, yeah, go tell them. So versus just saying, hey, who's who's someone you look up to or who's a, who's yep. a superhero that you know you wish you could meet? Um, yeah. yeah, that's a good one. Do you have another one, another question, top of mind? Well, if you remember, I think on that Sprinter van, on that drive to, I think we're going to um, Black Wolf Run, right? We did, we did a golf. Right. I think one of the questions that came up was, how have you experienced God lately? And I think that's such a powerful question to ask. We actually ask a version of that uh, with my wife and I and our six-year-old son. We get together for dinner at night. We always say, like, what are you grateful for today? Mm-hmm. And then another question that we just recently installed into this habit is, how have you experienced God today? Yeah. His goodness, maybe his mercy, How have you experienced it? And so it just forces you to pause and think. And instead of like glossing over like little things, it forces you to think back to like, how how have I experienced God? Maybe what are some, and then you start looking for it throughout the day. Mm -hmm. Wherever you have, you know, your focus is where some of that energy goes. And then you start finding it more. So I think that's a really cool question is like, where have you experienced God? Just, Just quickly at dinner at night with your family, just throw that in. And I think it brings up some really cool conversation. Well, let's both take a swing at that one. I'll go first um, Mm -hmm. because I think it's just fun to give the guys examples. So I was on the ice. The ice is not thick enough to walk on yet Mm -hmm. um, at my mother-in-law's house with my daughters. And I just prepped them. We're going to get wet. We're going to fall through. (laughs) And we went down to the ice and just, I mean, we're we're talking six inches of water. Like, And we're walking along the edge, but just watching these cracks kind of like zing through the ice and the bubbles Yep. And the joy and delight of are we going to fall through? Are we not? There's a, there's yeah. a whole trust parallel there, but yeah. it, it was there was a moment of I saw God in that moment. Yeah. So it's it doesn't take real the ain't, the clouds parted and like this is just a simple moment with my girls yep. that the frozen water is unbelievable. Yeah. If you take if time to pause oh. and experience it. Yeah, and how the ice cracks and makes noises. We had a recent experience too. We we're at the lake and half of our lake is frozen. So Cal and I would take a rock and we kind of like slide it across the ice and it makes like that reverberation sound. It's just beautiful. But mm. we were walking uh, at the cabin recently, just Lois, myself and, and Cal and our dog, and we're walking through a trail. There's no one out there. There's acres and acres of, of nothing. And all of a sudden you kind of hear like the wind blowing through the tops of the trees. And here we are, I mean, we're in Minneapolis and it's the concrete jungle. Sure. So we don't, but you think about that and like how cool, I mean, our God is, 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 a, is a God of creation, and think of how amazing this is that we can be here, and you listen to the wind blow through and make this amazing sound through the pine, yeah. the pine trees, and you're like, Cal, 
how cool is this? And he stops for yeah. a couple seconds and we just sit there and listen and Take you can experience God. I'm like, man, yeah. we need more moments like that in our life. Yeah. And both of our examples are out in creation, yeah. not in yeah. a conference room like we're in right now. So, yeah. and that's really our entire friendship has been yes. outside connection, yep. doing things, activities. Yep. Um, so that's probably just a nudge for all of us, no matter what the weather is. Is it right. rainy? Is it cloudy? Let's yeah. be outside more with Get our outside. kids. That's a, a tangible. Before yep. I jump into my next kind of area yeah. of questions, We've, we've talked a little bit about this trip to Green Bay, but I just want to give a little more context for the guys listening so they can go check out your website and the experiences yeah. that you're offering yeah. in 2024. So these guys' trips, maybe three years? How many years have you been hosting them? Since 2019. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. so four years now. Mm-hmm. Um, these The trip that I got to go on was a crafted experience, four days, three nights, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, we got to experience a tour of Lambeau Field. We had a professional football player take us through training exercises yeah. on turf, which was yeah. like stretching for all of us, pass, kick experience. Uh, We experienced some really great food, um, intentional conversation, some goal setting exercises, and some phenomenal golf, golf like I've never seen before. And shot a shot that you attempted out of a a sand trap (laughs) that will forever go down as one of the most amazing, the most amazing sand trap shot I've ever seen in my life. Backwards, up and over. On my knees. The weirdest, on your knee, outside on a berm. That's crazy. Backwards shot. So, um, but the experience was crafted for men that flew in from not only our country, but you had we had a couple guys from out of the country yeah. come yeah. to share a like purposeful, not a, it's not at all a, let's just get away and yeah. numb out. It's a very purposeful experience that uh, brought new relationships together and then challenged us all to yeah. how, how, how do we define success? How do we see success? Yeah. What are we living into and pressing into? So yeah. um, would you just add to that? How do you kind of explain the vision of why guys trip exists? So I, I have a corporate America background, like 15 years, but that whole background, I would say, all it was about for me was just climbing the ladder, like yeah. just trying to get to the next rung up the ladder. And it felt like every rung I would go up, I would just be getting further and further away from my authentic self and what I thought I was supposed to be doing. Right. So I got to this point where I was really burned out, really exhausted. I had no meaning. There was no purpose in it. And I had this rock bottom moment and, and I'm at the top of the, the ladder. And I'm like, like, what am I doing? This isn't what I thought. I thought I would get happiness and fulfillment and satisfaction up here. But for what does a man profit if he gains the whole world but loses his soul? And I thought I was losing my soul on this quest for more, bigger, and better. So I left corporate America, became a high school business teacher. It's quite a pivot. But I love, I found I love the process of uncovering learning for people. Mm -hmm. And so I taught for a few years. I knew that would be temporary given the ultimate promotion to a stay-at-home dad. Yes. Truly, truly the best. The gift of being home with my son, but the unintended gift of a blank canvas, a white piece of paper. So what do I want to create? And so I asked myself, what could I create that would have really benefited me when I needed it, when I was really burned out? Think of a a guy who's got success on paper, but he's empty in life. What would that guy really need? And so I thought, well, what if I just throw this really cool experience on the North Shore of Minnesota, on Lake Superior, we landed helicopters at the resort. It was at Larsmont, if it was kind of local and, yeah. and knows it. Did some guided hikes, private chef, sauna cold plunge before it's cool and trendy like yeah, it is yeah, now. Yeah. Early. And oddly enough, all guys showed up. So that was not my intention. I didn't market it to all guys. I think God's like, you got to, you need to do this. Mm-hmm. And it was obvious to me that guys don't have a space where they can talk about things that really matter in life, like personally, professionally. They got a space to go get a beer and wings and talk about sports but they don't have a place to share like, man, this is what's going on. I don't feel comfortable talking about this with other people, but if you create this container and I have a ton of fun in it, maybe we put some sweat on the floor with a workout or something like that. And then at the end of the day, we can talk about things that matter. And so that's what I learned in 2019. Mm -hmm. And I have a friend I introduced you to, Joel Mom. He talks about long obedience in the same direction over a period of time gets blessed. Mm -hmm. And so I just kept doing it again and again and again. Of course, there's been setbacks, there's been doubt, there's been fear, there's been failure, all that stuff, but I just kept doing it. And and here we are four years later, 15, 16 events and trips later, and next year we've got even more. But it's been a a process of learning Mm -hmm. and uh, just creating things that I think I would have needed, brotherhood, friendship, conversations that matter and truly push guys in the direction of just getting better, better as husbands, fathers, and leaders at work. You know, you can look at what you created, what you've created as it's all about the places. It's all about the experiences. Mm -hmm. 
I would say far secondary to the people that yep. have said yes. So you have the people who came and then the people who are being invited from it. It's a very much a word of mouth. And now we're, we're spreading yep. this word of mouth a little further to dad. Yep. Awesome. Um, yeah. But it's uh, it's the people and your heart and your intentionality and who you are uh, really does kind of come out into all aspects of. And I, again, I've experienced one of those of those yeah. experiences and I have already been inviting others. So yeah. thank you. The yeah. other thing that's just uncommon and that we just need more men who will be willing to take a massive change in this is the career trajectory. Mm-hmm. Not saying it's forced or needed for all of us. And, and there's a lot of us who feel like there's no way I could pull that off, what you did, yeah. go from this trajectory to teacher, to yeah. stay at home dad, yeah. to doing something, a dream yeah. business that you've started that, yeah. that creates these experiences. Um, I, I think I, I want to encourage through stories, real stories, more of our guys to prayerfully consider, well, what if I did take a step that felt like a step back mm-hmm. and it was the setup for the blank canvas yeah. that is a massive step forward? Yeah. How would you, I know we could spend a, a whole series of podcasts on that specific question, but any just thoughts around um, what caused you to have the courage to do it mm-hmm. and, and how would you guide somebody who is chewing on, like, what would it look like to maybe take a step back or yeah. take a pause so I have that blank mm-hmm. canvas? I feel like a lot of times life is looking out of the window of a high-speed bullet train. Mm -hmm. And you can't see anything clearly. Like, it's everything is a blur. So I think what you have to ask is, how do I get myself into a position where I can maybe see clearly? How do I get myself into a position where I can Mm -hmm. maybe hear from God more? Because we're so busy, life is so fast-paced that we just cannot slow down enough to know, like, hey, what is, maybe what is God calling me to do? What's that little nudge that's going on in my heart? I think that's the first thing, but second, it would come down to one word. If you ask me one word, Kyle, how do you summarize this? It's obedience. But to go further, I didn't have everything figured out. Like you hear four years later, we just did the Inca Trail. It was that we had a a training plan for the guys that was written by someone who trained SEAL Team 6 and the U.S. Olympic shooting team. Like, are you crazy? Like, I could never have saw that happening. Only thing I could see was my first trip. The only thing I could see was my first step. I think that's all you have to have because you can't steer a bicycle if the bicycle's not in motion. But if you can just get something moving in a direction, you can kind of course correct as you see. And and I think we all get stuck on like, oh, I have to have this thing figured out. I got to have a business plan. It's got to be 10 years down the road. I have to have it figured out. No, I just, I would challenge you to think is what is one step in an act of obedience that you can do to start to move towards it. Trust that God is going to continue to direct that path. And I think honor you taking action. And so that's what I would encourage people with. Yeah. So good. I think settling is common for, I'm in my forties now, you're in your forties, like settling in. It's the career that I just need to settle here and not Mm. take risks, Mm -hmm. settle in the area of maybe physical challenges or pushing myself physically settle in maybe even, um, travel or um, new experiences that might stretch me. Uh, what, what's your encouragement to someone who's listening that feels like, oh, I have settled in a few mm-hmm. areas. Uh, and this might get to the, some of the balance sheet stuff. Yeah. We can get into that a yeah. little bit. But uh, to the settled, the dad who's at least moving towards being settled versus living like a pioneer. That's, that's, that's a dream I have for all of us is like, let's be pioneers. Exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah, what encouragement? I think I asked myself this question and... I think a lot of us come upon this point in time, maybe it's, I can't quite put my finger on it. Maybe it's 15 years into a career-ish and you're hitting about 40. And so you ask yourself, okay, you're a golfer. Maybe if you're listening, you're a golfer. It's kind of like we're making the turn from the front nine to the back nine. And you get upon this, this point where you have to reflect and you say, okay, well, I did life this way for 15 years do I want to keep doing life that way for 15 years, for another 15 years? And the answer to that question for me was no. Like, I didn't have meaning and purpose at my work. I didn't feel like I was making an impact. I was driven by materialism and all these other things. Mm -hmm. And I just really kind of woke up and I said, I I just, I can't keep doing life this way. That's not how I want to show up. That's not what I feel like is on my heart. So if I'm not going to do it now, when am I going to do it? And I think, we're so used to being comfortable in the situation that we're in, make good money, uh, have a good title, all these things. So why would I want to, you know, why would I want to shake that boat? Mm-hmm. But you continue on that way, and 
this thing that might be inside of you nudging you on your heart, that nudge will just continue to get stronger and stronger and stronger. Let me so, interrupt you though. Does it get stronger or does it actually quiet down if you, if you ignore it for long enough? What do you think? I think eventually it'll get louder. I think okay. we can push things down for yeah. a little bit, but at some point, like a pressure release, yeah. it might come up in a really big way later on. So if we're really good. I think yes. men are really good at, here's the thing. I don't think problems occur in isolation, problems spread. So if you've got, if you're like, man, I got this thing at work. I don't love it, but it's kind of working out. Yeah. Eventually it's going to seep over into other categories of life. That. And so you can, men are good at building walls around things, but eventually it's going to come to a head. And so that's, that was true in my case. I think some, maybe some people are just more strong willed than I am. And at some point, maybe, maybe they can keep pushing it down, but I think it comes to the surface. Yeah. I made a list of words when I thought about this conversation with you, like words that describe yeah. Kyle. Yeah. And before, I'm excited to know what so these I are. Have, I have 30 words <laughs> and this is not common. This is not my approach to yeah. doing a podcast, but it's, it was fun for me to say, oh, these, this, this all describe and actually comfort is not on here. Mm. Mm-hmm. Uh, settled is not on here. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would love before exposing a few of my words. Yeah. Cal, you're six and a half. Yeah. Is he seven now? Or six seven and, in March. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Almost seven. Yep. So your son, what are maybe, because I got to play catch with him for a little bit. I'll put, I'll put you, Kevin. What would you, maybe two or three words that he would use to describe dad? Let's start with his list. I think, I think he would say, um, I think he would say fun. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm, if I can be the CFO in my family, the chief fun officer, that's mission accomplished. And by the way, that's on my list. So yeah. Is it really? One for one. We're, we're, okay. Yep, I'm on, on the same page as Cal. I think he would say, well, he might not know this word, but it's something to the, the effect of adventurous, something to the effect of yeah. likes to do new things. Um, and I, I think he would say, I think he would say caring because I really work hard at that. And so I think those might be the words that he would say. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to ask him later on. Okay. So if you, if like being a great host or hospitality, I didn't use the exact word caring, but I'd be three for three if you, if you tie those two. So, okay. Okay. This is helpful. This is going to inform where we go. Uh, now Lois, your wife, what are maybe two or three of the words she would use to describe spontaneous. She would also say adventurous, mm-hmm. and she would say a dreamer. So let's start with the last one, dreamer. And what we're going to do is just riff on some of these words yeah. um, in transferable ways that impact me, impact okay. the other guys, of just why, like, why would this be important as a dad, as a man? So yeah. why is it important to be a dreamer? I have always felt that I cast vision, mm-hmm. and that's maybe it's a, an inherent strength or something that I have, but I'm always someone who thinks – way into the future. I have this little process with Lois, right? Where I say, we need to make really good end of the dock decisions here. And we have a lake, so there's a dock at it. I just envision us when we're older, sitting at the end of the dock together and reflecting on our life saying, was that a good decision? Are we proud of that now? And so that's how I kind of look. And so she's like, "You, you, you just think so far into the future and I don't know, that's just something where I've always been that way. Mm-hmm. I, I love to daydream. I love to think really, really big. And we balance perfectly because she's really good at execution. Yeah. And she's not it's someone who thinks that, that far in the future. So we balance each other well. End of the doc. I love that with legacy yeah. thinking and long, yes. long range. Uh, fun. How do you make running hills with your son? Because you want him to be strong and you want to, you know, like, let's get strong together. How do you make running hills fun? That's a really good question. If you've got the answer for that, I'll take so it. So that specific one you don't but have. Okay. I, I, no, I would say yeah. like he needs to know that dad does it with him. And he needs good. to know that dad will go first. And when he sees that, he's all in. So we do it together. I don't just say I, I don't have a whistle. On, all right, Cal, you got to go exactly. do your thing. Like I do it with him. And I think he takes so much joy in doing things together, mm-hmm. whether it's reading a book, going for a boat ride, walking through the snow in the forest or running a hill. It doesn't matter as long as we get to do it together. Okay. Adventure. There's some, uh, some dads that are like, that's just not my thing. Adventure. Yeah. Why would adventure, uh, from a dad perspective, why is it important to bring some adventure oh. and spark that for our kids? I am so excited to talk about this. For the last three years, I've taken him on what I call dude venture. So dude, yes. like dude adventure. Yes. And I just realized when he was younger, Again, I'm thinking into the future. I want to think about how do I do maybe some rites of passage things with him and kind of welcome him into manhood. 
I want to start it now when he's three. So what does he like to do? How do I craft something that we could do together? So once a year he knows, hey, we're doing this thing. He's somehow really hooked on uh, water parks. So we've sure. gone to the same water park uh, for three years yep, in a row. These trips. But he knows that it's just it's just dad and him. Yeah. And he knows that for two nights we're going away. We are with each other all day. We're in the water park. So fun. And at the end of the day, we'll go get maybe pizza and do ice cream. And the next day we'd get to do it again. Round two. And that is all he talks about. So he has the next several dude ventures planned out in his head. I don't think he's ready for some of the ones that he wants to do. And maybe dad's not ready either. But he, he is so excited about it. And so I make it about him. I make it a tradition. I think that's really important. Yeah. And then when he gets a little bit older, he knows like, hey, we're just, this is a dude venture. We're doing this together. And then as he gets a little bit older, we can start talking about things as he gets into adulthood and manhood that we can have better conversations because it's just a part of our tradition. You laid the groundwork. You're laying it younger years. I mean, over the last three years here, you, there's no intentional. We need to have this chat. But you're, you're creating this for shared moments. Yep. And you put it on the calendar. Dad takes time off work. There, yeah. It's one on one. There's yeah. drive time. There's yeah. anticipation. There's moments. Yeah. There's laughter. There's stories to oh, tell yeah. later. I mean, really, even if it's not again our thing, it's just like, hey, I'll just go do the same thing we always do, and I'll yeah. do it with the whole family instead of one on one. You lose a lot if you just stay and play it safe. Mm -hmm. Versus, um, yeah, I love that. Uh, D Dad Awesome was called for one episode. It was called. Uh, Dad ventures, so you just put a D on the, on the front of I dad like ventures, that. all about dads having adventures with kids. Yeah. So that was like part of like the yeah. very first. My wife Michelle, she watched the episode and said, "Nah, don't call it that." But it's still in our DNA. Yeah. Dads doing adventures, dudes going. I love out. It. You got a son? Call it. I dude, love it. Rip it off, right? Can, yeah. our, can our guys rip that? Maybe off? you see the domain names available. I'm gonna yeah, quick Google snag that. it first. Yeah, snag <laughs> it first. Okay, let's go to. And again, I have thirty of these. Yeah. Um, let's go to curiosity. Why, why is it helpful for a dad to stay curious? I think we learn a lot when we put ourselves in the position of being a beginner. And I think when you're a beginner, you have to have a sense of wonder and curiosity. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what I would say about that. Yeah. Brilliant. Pause. Think about that doc. I think about uh, mm -hmm. conversations we've had about just pause. Mm -hmm. The pile of wood needs to be split. I'm just going to pause for a second and take in the sound of the trees, right? Mm -hmm. Why is pausing? I, I see all these things that I'm bringing up. I see in you mm -hmm. and I admire, uh, but I'd like you to riff on instead of reflect on how you do it. Yeah. How can we um, step into and why is it important to pause? I think to go back to the analogy of the high speed bullet train, life is not getting slower. Life is getting faster. I think about what a traditional day looks like. You've got work. And at the end of the day, I mean, kids are in, how many activities and I hear dads talk about, they got to go to here, then they got to do pick up here, then they got to get this. And, hustle. Yep. and if you can just take a minute and maybe even have intentional questions to ask yourself, like maybe that's the, maybe that's the cheat code. Maybe that's the mm -hmm. hack. What am I grateful for? How do I, how am I experiencing God right now? And just ask yourself some questions and reflect. Yeah. I don't think we give ourselves the gift of reflection and we don't give ourselves the gift of solitude enough. Mm -hmm. And sometimes Maybe there's things that just bubble up to the surface. And when you pause and you reflect and you're in solitude, you can allow those things that come up to the surface. Yeah. Uh, this next one, the word is wisdom, but it's your pursuit of wisdom is what I'm, I'm, I'm grabbing onto. I mean, I, you, you are wise and I've, got, I've gained wisdom from you, I but I'm, I'm focused on your pursuit of wisdom. You yeah. did a 30, 31 day Proverbs challenge, and yeah. this is free resource for the guys. If they follow you on Instagram, yeah. all those videos are still up yeah. of, of you reflecting one chapter at a time, one day yeah. at a time. Uh, the pursuit of wisdom. Yeah, talk about that. It's funny you say that. I, I don't think I'm wise. And I, I feel like I have to go and constantly be in the pursuit of wisdom myself. Needed, yeah. And it isn't like this one-time thing and you get it. It is a constant quest for it. And so where do you turn to me is like, well, what better than Proverbs? And I think it's really important to go through that 31 days in several months of the year. There's 31 chapters in Proverbs. It'll take you five minutes to do it. So it just seemed like that lined up for me. And I know several wise people in my life, including I'd give a shout out to my father-in-law who doesn't listen to podcasts, so he, he probably won't listen to it. But he has Proverbs memorized. Like he's got, he could just go like this with Proverbs. And he instilled that into his kids, one of which is my wife. Yes. And so I try and go through Proverbs with Cal in the morning as well and just have him start to memorize. Mm -hmm. And so I do that with my son. 
And I just think it's a really fun way to learn together. And you took it beyond, though, just those five minutes that it takes to read. You process with your son. You actually yeah. brought exercise into the reflection process. Yeah. So I'm assuming, so you probably, instead of listening to an audio book or this or that, like you actually took time to ponder what yeah. you just read. Yeah. You, you, I would grab a verse that I caught in that chapter that I thought really spoke to me in the morning. Mm-hmm. And then I would just grab my phone. I put my ruck on my back and start walking. And then I would just pray through it for a little bit. I would rehearse it. I'd memorize it. I'd keep speaking it. And eventually I just held the phone up and said, this is what I learned. This is what I would love to impress upon you. And it was cool to watch the, the response to that. Yeah. Uh, joy and specifically the story I thought about was us trying out these powered airfoils. We were surfing on these <laughs> hydrofoil blades. Yeah. Uh, and this was all, again, your neighbor hooked us up with this experience. Yeah. But you crafted the experience by inviting yeah. me up to join you. Yeah. Um, joy and delight and just like you know, us getting kicked off and thrown into the lake and swimming back over to it. Uh, joy. How can we uh, and wh- why do we need to infuse more joy? And how can, we, how can we spark some of that for our families? I think sparking joy is by doing things you've never done before. Okay. And I don't think when you... I think when you came up, I don't know that you've done it before. It was, first it was time your first time. Yeah, you yeah. Look, you were incredible for doing it. By the way, I was like, <laughs> I, you're way better than me, and I've done this a few times. But I think, again, like putting yourself to be a beginner, and if you can do that with your family, like you mm-hmm. all experience something for the first time, yeah. what a joyful moment that is. Yeah. And so maybe it's just, hey, once a month, once a quarter, like let's find something new that we've all never done before, and let's just all go do it together. Let's all learn together. Mm-hmm. Let's be silly. Let's laugh. Let's laugh at each other. And you create a concrete memory in a moment on top of all that. This plays off of, you know, I said sparking joy, but just being a spark and being mm. someone who says, I'll go first and take yep. really initiative is probably the word. Yeah. Uh, I see this in you. Grateful for this. Yeah. I've been, the, I've benefited from your initiative. You go yeah. first and you say, Hey, come with me. Yeah. Uh, why, why do we need more dads to take initiative? It's happened too many times. I'm sure you experience it too, where you get what you get together with people and they say, Hey, this has been a lot of fun. Like, let's, let's do this again soon. Well, whoever does it, follow up. no one ever does it. So it's like, I just decided one day that connection relationships are really important to me. We always talk about this. No one does it. I'm going to be the guy to just coordinate it, set it up yeah. and do the invitation. And it turns out there's, there's a business behind that. So I just made the decision that I'm going to be the one to do that. If I'm the chief fun officer of my family, yes. you actually got to set up some fun things to do. So it's, it's really not that complicated. It is just making a declaration to say, I'm going to be the one to do it. Mm. And then the last one that I'll take, I won't hit all 30 today. This is fun though. This is really fun. <laughs> I like it's, the it's, format. It's generosity. And being regardless of where the ex- exact moment of income for the family or wealth, just mm-hmm. choosing to live into it's who I am as someone yeah. who's generous. I'm so, I'm grateful because I've seen you yeah. live this out. Uh, why, why generosity? Why, why would that help our families go in mm. a better direction? Uh, well, it's biblical. Yeah. And so I think it's an act of obedience, uh, probably first and foremost, that's how we look at it. And I think we're pretty on the interpretation of it. I don't yeah. think there's a lot of room for error there. Yeah. So I think that's an act of obedience. And I think, again, I think God blesses obedience. And it's just something that we've always done. Um, and we took it a step further when our paths connected. I don't know if you know the full story. Is it okay if I kind of shared some of the story? Yeah. So when we had Cal, I was a teacher. He was born in March. So Lois took her maternity leave and we prayerfully thought through and considered how are we going to do this like i'll finish the school year do i renew my contract i'm driving 65 miles one way to teach it's a long time to be gone and she loved her job it was flexible and so we decided that i would be the one to stay home for a season and the end of um, her maternity leave lined up coincidentally perfect with the end of the school year and so when the end of the school year was up i became the stay-at-home dad and so I'm sitting home with my son, and I'm, I'm just thinking to myself, now remember, my frame of reference is I'm in the classroom. And I'm making the observation that a lot of times students that are struggling with academics, also struggling with behavior, there's a common theme. Yeah. And you probably know what the theme is. It's related to a relationship with their dad. And I'm like, this breaks my heart that I get to be home with my son and to no fault of other people. Uh, they don't have that same gift. And I think God just really spoke to me 
but I didn't know what to do with it. I'm like, so does this mean I got to start a nonprofit and try to figure this out? I didn't know what that meant right away until our paths crossed because it was important to me to support other kids that maybe don't have this opportunity that I have sitting here with my son. And so our paths crossed and we just, we just went hard and, and really went double down on it. We got to support this mission. It's important to us. It's a calling on our heart. You're doing it. I don't have to do it. Like this is, this is great. Like I'm not, I think when we're called, we're called to something, we don't know how to do it. Mm -hmm. And we tend to think that we have to have this stuff all figured out. That might not be the case. We connected, we've got a great relationship and now I can support this way because you're doing the thing that I don't know how to do. Mm -hmm. And it's beautiful how this all wor works together that you can be a part of something in, in a way that maybe you didn't imagine before. Wow, I, I did not know that full story, Kyle. Yeah. And the, the idea of paying attention to pain or passion of like, what, where am I moved? Mm -hmm. And some of those spheres like, um, like men moving from the wrong definition of success, that area of being moved, you actually take practical action of helping yep. to address that. Yeah. But there's other areas that move you. Yeah. And you can't say yes to all these areas. So this area of fatherlessness yeah. moves you and you align instead with generosity yeah. and with support and care yeah. and encouragement of me. Yeah. Uh, and I think all of us really can prayerfully say, which domains am I supposed to step into with my yeah. action and my time? Yeah. And which spheres, because there's probably other ones, that I can step into with generosity. Yeah. And uh, God invites us to do both, and there's joy in yep. both. Yeah. So, hmm. Yeah. The uh, this slightly connects with with the theme of generosity, but it, we can't be generous if we're taken out in any it, it kind of a, a battle scenario. There's offense and there's defense. An athletic scenario. You can go whatever one you want. You can use, uh, but there's offense, defense. I've heard you talk about proverbs, how it aligns and yep. brings wisdom for the offensive yes. and wisdom for the playing defense. So we don't get taken yep. out. Now, yep. anyone who's taken out can't live generously. Yep. Can't live with all these words that I, I described yeah. to you and kind of affirmed and and we talked about applicable to all of us dads. None of that's possible if we're taken out. Mm -hmm. So, how do you think about offense, defense? Can you kind of frame up how you think about that and and, and take it from the proverbs? I, one of the the verses that really sticks out is guard your heart. Mm -hmm. And I think that we are con not men and women, everyone is constantly under attack and you have got to protect all the things that you are given responsibility for. There's another great verse that we should be diligent to know the state of our flocks and tend to our herds. Mm -hmm. And I gather most people listening don't have flocks of <laughs> sheep, but the principle is you're given responsibility over things and stewardship over things. And culture has put, this notion of professional success on a, on a pedestal. Yeah. But a lot of times what we don't see behind the scenes are fractured relationships that have been caused as a result of that path that people have taken or a mm -hmm. uh, strange relationship with children or consequences to health or loneliness or addiction, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, because we are sacrificing all these other things for the sake and at the altar of professional success. One thing. And you have to play both offense and defense to protect all these things like your health, your body, your relationships, your marriage, um, fi finances, mm -hmm. faith, all these other things. And so I think that's really important. And a lot of people just don't pay attention to that as much. And what we've done in Guyship is, is create a balance sheet where guys can just take inventory and say, where am I, where am I, where am I at with this? Mm -hmm. How am I doing in my marriage? And if it's not going well, how do I improve on that? Yep. And so to see it on paper, what gets measured gets improved, and we, we measure what matters. So if I can see it on paper, I can check in on this quarterly, and, and how am I doing, and how do I improve, and how do I continue to take steps to be on offense to make it better? Yeah. And so those are some of the ways that, that I do it and some of the ways that we do it at Guy's Trip. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, Stay-at-home dad advice, just any kind of top of mind. Like It's a small percentage, but it's an amazing yeah. percentage of men yeah. are listening to our stay-at-home dads. Yeah. What would you encourage them with? I think you have to find a way for you to authentically parent according to you. And what that looks like for you is something that's tough to tell. But I think you should ask a few questions like, how do I make this fun? Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the most important questions to ask. And stop looking at how other people might be doing it, but like, how can you make this fun? And some people maybe chose to be in that situation, maybe maybe not. I don't know the background, but man, just just have some fun. I remember going to um, Kinder Music here in the cities with Cal, and Cal was two-ish, 
and it's all stay-at-home moms and me. That's right. <laughs> and and he's he's doing these things like parents are um, parents are encouraged to participate, like dance with kids. And I'm like I'm like what am, uh, this Daytime. is like I am and so I'm just like I'm just going to embrace this. Mm-hmm. I am going to shed my ego and stop caring about what other people think because the only one that matters to me right now is my son. And so how do I stop caring about what are people going to think about how I dance and just dance yes. and just have fun? Yes. I think like stop thinking about what are people thinking about me? Stop caring about that and just care about what your child thinks mm-hmm. about you. And then maybe as a, as a landing place, there's a spreadsheet. I know you're a spreadsheet guy. Oh, and big, I have a spreadsheet as big. well. Yeah. Uh, but you've created one that really helps understand yeah. how precious these years are. And yeah. how, man, it, it, after, yeah. and it, with, without, you don't have to take us through all the nuts and bolts, but what did the spreadsheet reveal? What did you kind of prove out through your spreadsheet that matters to us? So I heard someone share a number, a statistic on like how, like how much time we have with our kids. And I thought there's, there's no way that that's true. No way that that's possible. So I, I did what all nerds do and I went to Excel yes. and I plugged things into Excel. And sure enough, I figured out that according to some assumptions, which you don't have time to get into, but, and I'm happy to share the spreadsheet with someone, Yes. but by the time that your child turns 18, 90% of the time that you're ever going to have with them is in the rear view mirror. And you think about it like, how is that, you know? But then when you sit down, you put the numbers in, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. You're with them so much more. I heard someone talk about it this way. Like, so my parents are 74. Let's say they live to 80. So people are like, oh, I got six years with my parents. If you see them twice a year, you have 12 experiences left with them. That should shift everything for you. Wow. And so that's a, just, I'm really interested in looking at ways that challenge my, my thinking and give me new perspectives because that should cause me to, to grow and change and maybe do things differently. I want to make sure, because you answered two questions there, which I love, yeah. um, but thinking the other direction, yeah. instead of just doing the math of how much time that I have with my four daughters, mm-hmm. thinking about my mom mm-hmm. and thinking about uh, as our family moves to Florida, you know, maybe it is three or four times a year, just mm-hmm. like you said, and start to do the math out and she's very healthy, so grateful. Yeah. Um, but these are treasured mm-hmm. four day trips when she comes yeah. down, seven oh, yeah. day trips. These are treasured. And I probably, if I actually had a spreadsheet that marked that direction, would treasure them more. Mm-hmm. And that's life is we forget yeah. to treasure the things we should treasure yes. most. Yep. So thank you for the encouragement you're on welcome. that side as well. Is there any yeah. topic we didn't hit that you're like, oh, this would be fun to share with dad. Awesome. Any, anything mm-hmm. that we, that didn't come up? No, you know, I haven't go- I feel bad. I, I haven't gone to an event. Yet. Fathers for the Fathers. Fathers for the Fathers. Yes, not yet. Because I'm in, I'm in Grand Forks. Sure. We're in northern Minnesota. But we talked earlier before hitting record, and I'd love to participate because you talked about the, the tough mutter uh-huh. where you can bring your children with you. Exactly. And I'm like, oh, man, like maybe I can parlay that with on our way down to do a dude venture to Kalahari, Wisconsin Dells. And so I'm thinking okay. in my head, like, I would love to participate in some way because you are giving guys such a unique opportunity to train for something, commit to something, be a part, like we want to belong to something. And then you're giving an opportunity for your kids to see their dads go through something tough and challenging. And then you flip it around and now the dads get to do something with their kids that are tough and challenging. And like, what a beautiful opportunity. So I want to be a part of that. I need to know the dates. And so if anyone's listening, I'd love to see you there. I'm going to shout you out right now because I think that would be really cool. Well, and if you think about it as a, if you incorporate the dad adventure, dude Mm -hmm. venture, uh, you really could drive from, you know, you could drive from 10 hours away if you want to the upper Midwest. So it's in Minnesota. It's the last Saturday of June in 2024. And uh, I'll share more info. The registration isn't quite open on our end yet, but it is open on the side of Tough Mudder. So, and it's, it's a team of men doing this 10 mile, all these obstacles. And then our kids get a chance to do the half mile, the mile or the two mile. So, Let's go. Fathers yeah. for the fatherless I with a it. lot of uh, getting muddy and doing hard things uh, so as good. teams of men. So, so Kyle, thank you for being a part of this episode. Hey, would, you, would you pray over all the dads listening? Yeah, I would love to. Yeah. Lord, we just thank you for this time together with Jeff. We thank you for uh, everyone who's taken time out of their busy day. Lord, we know that life is busy, but men have decided to tune in today. We just pray that something lands with them. Something has opened up and maybe caused something new and, and, and causes them to show up as better fathers and husbands and leader in their work. We, pr- we pray that these men would continue to lead. We know that there's a lot of distractions. There's a lot of things going on in life that, that could pull them away. 
from the calling that you have on them to be husbands and fathers and just pray that you would continue to strengthen them, continue to encourage them, uh, help them to be the, the CFOs of their family and continue to strengthen that relationship with their kids. And we ask all this uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.